Shall we play a game? Alright, bitches, we're live. Uh, we're playing an, uh, an old game with new DLC. We're playing Lake. We're doing the Season's Greetings one. I enjoyed the first game. I really did. Set in the 80s. Small town. Cozy fun. Get to drive a mail truck. Figure stuff out. This time we're playing, uh, we're playing her dad in a prequel. Get into it. We know it's too loud or, uh, oh wait. Season's Greetings. New game. Lake from the makers of Pond and Creek. Yes. <clears throat> hey, I, I really enjoyed the game. It was, it's got an art style that I love. It, uh, just sits here at this deer. Even though I hit new game. Well, this could be the shortest game ever. Okay. Let's, uh... <laughs> this is the whole game. Hey, I like Starfield still. I don't care what anybody says. Off that, off that hate train. Look at my pretty face. Oh, Lake. Let's kill it. Not sure why I did it. How is it boredom? There's so much to do. You can run around, look at planets. You don't load on this screen, you dumbass. Well, there you go. Okay. There. Too many screens. I like it. I like building starships. I like just exploring. I like old phones ringing. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's that white Christmas looking? You promised, remember? Oh, Meredith, of course, it's coming down as we speak. Wait till you see it. Great. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Uh, my plane lands Tuesday at 5.30. Perfect. How will you get here? Will someone pick you up? Obviously. I've got the best chauffeur around. His name starts with a T and ends with Amos Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I hear he's the best in the business. I'll make sure he's there. 5.30 sharp. Oh, thanks, Dad. See you soon. Two more nights, Em. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. Same here. Say hi to Mom for me. Bye, Dad. Bye, Em. Have a safe trip. Except for that. Wrong, wrong sound. Uh, he's still sick. No kidding? <clears throat> At least, Good you know, morning, go to the Thomas. doctor. I bet you woke up feeling like a million dollars after winning that monster bot last night. Morning, Frank. It felt like $96.40, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great night's sleep. Ha, I bet. It looks like you've hit the jackpot again today. There's hardly any Christmas mail rush because of the snow. Ah, oh, that's a pity. I really don't mind being outside in the snow. Well, I do. Snow's for looking at, not for walking through. Take it easy out there today. Preach, Frank. Preach. All right, am I just out hand delivering or am I taking a truck? 
Providence Oaks, good morning. I guess I wasn't the only one that noticed all that white stuff lying around. I okay. now have enough PO positive pet peeves about snow to last me a lifetime. But don't let that stop you from calling in new ones. My answer machine can handle it. PO positive or pet peeves? We're starting off the week with a P.O. snow positive from Cheryl. Jack, we all love the beautiful snowy scenery. But there's one thing I like even better. The sound. Or actually lack thereof. Fresh snow absorbs sound and creates a tranquility that is just sublime. Believe it or not, Cheryl, even a loud mouth like me can appreciate a bit of silence every now and then. And, judging by the weather, we can enjoy it for a little while longer. We've got some bright but cold days coming up with a chance of snow later in the week. And now, music. Uh, I need to remember keyboards. Let's see, controls. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Agenda, okay. Horn is tab, good, good. Run, talk of the radio. And map and camera. Parcel, Thomas. Don't forget the parcel. Oh, that's right. You have to take things out of the truck. Uh, don't know if he's been to the doctor. I'd have to have a metal pike actually sticking out of my cranium to go to the doctor. <clears throat> Same, but I've been sick for a week. Oh, crap. I just have to think about this. Three hundred main. Yeah, the sound of fresh crunchy snow is awesome. Being out in it in more than you know, four and a half seconds, no. It snowed a little bit here yesterday and it's in the it's three hundred. I mean it's the wrong package. This is 300 main right here. 300 main. Didn't I pick up 300 main? Oh. Good catch. What's the worst they're going to do? It's not like a man's ever delivered the wrong thing every day. This fine day. Thomas, hi. Well, business as usual. No, I'm just joking. The situation is not that dire. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, sales can't be bad with the holidays around the corner, right? Times have been better, I suppose, but you're right. I'm not complaining. Besides Mildred, there's been an odd customer or two today, and would you believe? One of them was even looking for a full set of encyclopedias. Encyclopedia Britannicas? <sighs> Never knew you had a clone walking around out there. <laughs> well, that certainly would be something, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be enough books to discuss or wine to consume. By the way, did you know that the world's largest encyclopedia was created in 15th century China and comprised about 11,000 books? Isn't that fascinating? Imagine having to load that into your car. <laughs> I don't think my trusty old van could take that. Or my bookcase, for that matter. Well, they do say a good book is easy to pick up, but hard to put down. Get it? <laughs> she flirting? How's Emily coming along with Christmas dinner, by the way? 
I can imagine she's pretty excited about Meredith coming over. So let me know if she needs any more cookbooks. I've got this beauty from Good Housekeeping that's all the rage right now. Oh, that might be a bad idea. I'm going to have my pants let out just looking at the cover. I suppose you're right. But don't you worry, I'll leave the cookbook. I have a feeling St. Nicholas has other things in store for you this year. Sounds ominous. You have no idea. And what does St. Nick have in store for you this year? A Yule log, Anything if you know what I mean. Special? I'm flying out to Georgia tomorrow to spend Christmas with my Daniel and his wife for a few days. We're planning a Hawaii Five O marathon. It's my guilty pleasure, and luckily, it's theirs too. <clears throat> ah, Dano, give him my best when you see him and his wife, of course. I shall. Right. I better get back to it and get ready for the New Year's sale. I've been in a perpetual fight with my pricing gun lately, so I need all the time I can get. And good things come to those who wait. I'll bring over your presents later in the week. I hope you have a Merry Christmas Eve tomorrow and give my love to Emily and Meredith. Will do. And season's greetings to you two. I'll, I'll give this game one thing. Besides the art style, which I love, the voice acting in this one is just perfect. I miss bookstores. I miss Walden books. Oh. I used to love going to Walden books. They had a game section. They had all goodies. Christmas gift? Here's hoping. The Flick Shack. Oh, that's right. They had, a, they had a, their, uh, their movies here. We're going to have to look it up. Look at all the titles again because some of them were hilarious. Hello, Angie. Long time no see. Yeah, one package for you today. Thanks, Thomas. How's Emily? She's very busy. The motel's chronically understaffed. Ah, yes. This must be busy season at the motel. I do like it when out-of-towners come to visit our little hamlet, especially when they like movies. <laughs> Apparently most of the rooms have been fitted with VCRs now. Should be good for business. So, what do we have here? Oh, right. You okay there, Angie? It's just some things from LA. <sighs> Toiletries, stuff like that. I um, recently ended my relationship. Oh, Angie, I'm so sorry. It's fine. It was my decision, and it was the right decision. The long distance thing just wasn't working out. Still, seeing your spare toothbrush, that shampoo bottle, a stick of deodorant, it just makes it so definite you know like the la chapter of my life is now finally completely closed and if you remember the original game which i do the main character his daughter and the clerk here bow, tick -a -bow, wow. breaking up right before christmas eve must be extra tough yeah that does add to the melancholy timing isn't exactly my strong suit i guess Sounds like you're dealing with it like a champ, though. How did your ex take it? My ex-girlfriend, you mean? Yeah, she's handling it okay. 
Other than the passive-aggressive shipping of toiletries, I guess. <laughs> oh, did you not know? Seeing <laughs> Captain Sullenberger as a postman. <laughs> Sully. <laughs> to be honest, I, I did have an inkling. <laughs> Wasn't sure, though. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly something I walk around advertising around here. <laughs> this is probably the first time I've seen you blush. Well, I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. And your spare toothbrush. Merry Christmas, Angie. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Thomas. My toothbrush and I bid you adieu. Adieu. All right, let's look at the movies. Okay, Christmas Barrel, Schwarzenwald in The Thermominator. I wish we can get closer. Something Holiday, it's supposed to be National Lampoons. The Glue Lagoon. Is that this craze dance? The Christmas Gory, Blade Jogger, the Story Thriller Photo Display. Is it Crash Dance? Can't really read it. Object instead of the thing. The Odd Father. Look who's here to save us all. Ghost Blasters with Bill Curry and Danny Ackloyd and Sigmund Weevil. Gremlins, Gremlins, ah. the Hound of Music, Wacky Two, Meh Man, The Brunch Bunch, LGM, 19 Candies, <laughs> 19 Candles or Candies, I can't tell. The Hound of Music. Such a good one. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and Duck Feet. The Friendly Dead. Space Wars. I don't say anything new. Little Green Men, that's what the LGM stands for. Okay. The Good, the Bad, and the Duck Feet is my favorite. Repo Woman. And every single movie is also half price. Blade Jogger. That's good. That I'm older, I've down. Late December, there's no tree to be Was it Elvis? Mary the Jew. Now she wants to Oh, God. What am I to do? All right, we got a letter for 302 Jackson. Now so hit that one. Wait a minute. Are you telling me they cleared the snow in your town? Sure don't hear. They just slap some salt or uh Rio to Jackson. Three hundred. Rio two. Fancy handwriting on this one. The religious is about it after the blizzard of 79 cost an incumbent an election. Really? Not here. 
Here they can give two reps. Four hundred late. Oh, it's a funny story. It's quicker to go. At least it is to me. Back through town? Yeah, it is. But for others, especially my mother, they that lives in it for me. I swear I'm not a liar. Daddy with the Christmas tree on fire. My dad drank much more than most. This time of year, he tends to double his dose. I'm not saying it's wrong, and I'm not saying it's right. The Yule log ain't the only thing burning that night. Oh, it's a funny story. At least it is to me. Taking the second. Third right. This guy's singing about his dad committing arson. Jesse used to live. I remember I once when he came home from school after learning about bad. walnuts. You know, I got to do though, as much as the music is great, turn it down a touch. Um, that's post traumatic Christmas tree fire stress disorder. It's a real thing. You can look it up. Oh, it's a funny story. At least it is to me. Another satisfied customer. Unless it's bills. Yeah, but do you name your trucks like we do? We have some of the greatest plow names. Jesse used to live. I remember once Meredith came home from school after learning about walnuts. She asked us if they were named after the street. <laughs> there we go. Three hundred late. All these busy people hurrying along. I want to see what happens if you set a pin here. How do you place a pin point? Does it do anything? Making it important to be the first in the line. When the cookie crumbles, the best piece they will find. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Oh God, I remember the hotel with the guy that was playing video games and couldn't be asked. Hi, Ben. Got a pretty hefty package here for you. Uh, thanks, Thomas. I've been waiting for that one. Hi, Mr. W. 
please, please, please tell me the mail truck needs a tune-up. <laughs> hey, Lori. I didn't know you'd already begun working here. Weren't you supposed to start in January? Yeah, she pestered me into allowing her to start a week early. Already put snow tires on half the town's vehicles. At this rate, I can retire before the end of next summer. But this truck's fine, Lori. I gave it a checkup for Frank less than 10 days ago. Ah, uh, are you sure there's nothing I can improve on the old, um, what do you call this thing again? I just call it the mail truck, actually. Uh, boring. We need to come up with a better name than that. Tell you what, Lori. Maybe you can check out the car horn. It sounded a little off last time I checked. The horn, eh? I'm on it. That was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Mr. W. Diaphragm had gotten a little dusty, but it's all better now. The mail truck is honking like a big old goose again. Thanks, Lori. Come to think of it, I will be calling your truck the Goose from here on out. Big, white, wobbly, and with a honking great horn. Honk, honk! The goose has a nice ring to it. Or a nice honk, anyway. Well, gotta be getting back to my rounds. Happy holidays, you guys. Thanks, Thomas. You too. After delivering the last package, we'll take it the nice scenic route back. I don't know what waypoints do. Better. Dex, you fixed it. Oh, it's the hotel. Let's see if the guy's playing video games in this one again. Because that would be the best. Part and parcel. Mr. Mailman, got anything for me today? I have one special delivery for you, ma'am. And we can have a little chat if you'd like. Ooh, a little chat. I'm afraid I'm a bit too busy for that, sir. I mean, it's his wife, so he does got a special package for her. Oh, you sound an awful lot like my wife. I hardly see her these days. Oh, what a shame. Well, you must have a lovely wife. Ooh. She looks almost as lovely as you. Oh, I better get this, honey. I'll see you tonight. Oregon Trail Motel. How may I help you?
I think in the original game it wasn't snowing, was it? Thomas has been drinking. Hello? Hey, Dad. I'm Meredith. <clears throat> Are you all packed for tomorrow? Um... Meredith? Dad, I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to make it tomorrow. What's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? I'm fine, Dad. Don't worry. But I'm just... I'm snowed under with work. Add at 86. It needs to be up and running at the start of the new year. I stumbled upon some errors today, and now we need to fix them this week. This sucks. Yep, it sure does. Is that Steve guy pressuring you again? No, it's not Steve's fault. We have all worked so hard this year. Can't squander it all in the last week, right? I hate to say it, but it sounds exactly like what you said last year. Have you told your mom yet? Yeah, I just called her at the motel. Oh, someone's calling. It must be your mom. Okay, well, that's my cue. Gotta get back to it. I'll call again soon, Dad. Love you. Hey, Em. Is that you? <laughs> if by Em you mean Emily, then yes. If you mean Em for Meredith, then no. <laughs> what if I meant M from James Bond? Oh, Thomas, don't joke around as if nothing's wrong. What else can we do? It's just Christmas. Well, just deal with it, like we always <clears throat> do. Why don't we invite someone else? Unless you're happy with just Mildred coming over. Uh, all AWS clients connected to TLS 1.2. Yes. How, how do you still have people on 1 and 1.1? One, one?
Why was it? Wait, how is it tedious finding which ones aren't 1.2? What kind of clients are they? We went through it last year, year before. I don't remember. The uh, one of our upgrades required everything to be at 1.2, and uh, I argued with the vendor. They're like, "Well, you don't need to be at 1.2. You guys aren't connecting to the external." I go, "I, I don't care." I said, "Other things are connecting to us." from out, you know, coming in. I said, I want to make sure that it's going to connect. Oh, that's even worse. Okay. How many did you have to do? Just Mildred? We might as well go for rock bottom and ask Nancy to. Oh, yes. Oh, I'd love to hear them bicker about the cat food assortment at the general store. I would. In any case, I'll call Beth and ask her again, too. And then I have to do a towel run, refill the vending machine, and vacuum the reception area. So it'll be a while before I'm done. I'll see you tonight, honey. Okay, Em. Drive home safe. Yeah, okay, three days before sucks, but how many how many do you think it is? Are you still looking? Uh okay, are we gonna watch TV or read a book? I know what I'm gonna do. Find a new partner. Uh, Officer on, Hamburger. Chief. You know I don't need nobody's help. He's from Germany. Hamburg, to be exact. A German? Oh, for Christ's sakes. Stop complaining, Fries, and go pick up that hamburger from the airport. Classic 80s TV. Well, let's look at all this mail now. What the crap? Three clients. We have a lot of uh, connected email. Our proposal to the boss to centralize email to a single server API. It's not going forward because there's never enough time. That's, that's kind of shitty. All right, nothing up top. So we will go the back route here, if you know what I mean. I just found out today that... It's time for a different take on the snowfall. Theo positive or pet peeves? Take it away, Charles. Jack, I'd like to respond to what Cheryl said about the snow yesterday. Sure, it makes everything nice and quiet, but we can't forget the sweet sound of crunching snow beneath our boots. Thank you very much. Sure we can, Charles. And that's the last one about snow for now. Apologies to the guy with the pet peeve about yellow snow. Better luck next time. Today's weather is bright and beautiful as yesterday. Enjoy the grunge, folks. Back to the playlist. Anyway, I found out today that uh, I next the next next week already is next week the twentieth. Uh, we're doing our upgrade on the twentieth. Uh, I get to do it from one a.m. to six a.m. Stupid excited about that. Yeah, next Wednesday then. The, the, the part that gets me is uh, I'm on call this week. Is that much Christmas lighting really necessary? Yes. Um, 404? 402. 
Uh, so I'm on call this week. And then the, the upgrade is next Wednesday, early morning. Um, technically, it's Thursday morning, isn't it? Shit, I gotta think about that. If we're doing it Wednesday a.m. or Thursday a.m. I think we're doing it... Whatever the 20th is. Is that Wednesday, right? So I'll start early Wednesday. We'll go live with this new thing, which we're still testing, and we have we just started testing. Um, support it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'm gone the week after. Anyone want to take bets on uh, how often I'm going to get called all through Christmas week? Oh, it's, it's going to go so well. Yeah. It's going to be a gift. nightmare. Here's hoping. And we're purposely going live with things that are broken. That's the part that just kills me. Absolutely kills me. Oh, good day, Kay. Hi, Thomas. I've got a parcel for you. Oh, thanks. I'm sure Mo... Uh, Santa will be happy this arrived just in time. <laughs> Anything I can do to help the old man out. Really good in the background back there. He's just standing at the bottom of the steps. Is he case in the place? Nope. What's she doing? Besides clipping through cars. Uh, how are things with the family? Good. Good, really looking forward to the holidays. I've been making Grace this great big space station out of ply. It's coming together really nicely. And Barry is getting Max a second hand guitar as we speak. Oh, that sounds great. I'm sure they can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> Neither can I. Uh, what about you and Emily? Got anything special planned for the coming days? Well, sadly, Meredith can't make it this year. Ah, uh, right. Well, we'll still have fun, though. I'm sure. Well, I'd best get on. I have to check on the oven. Or Santa will have to eat charcoal when he stops by tonight. <laughs> All right. Best get back to it myself. Give our love to Barry and the kids. And Santa, if you happen to see him. Will do. You and Emily have a great Christmas too, okay? Uh, we're going to push something to prod this week that could really use a week or two more testing, and it's around 50% my code. Yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, luckily, it's not my code, though, but it's my building. Uh, Gassy's here. I'm existing here for a bit, then probably back to bed. Or just go to bed, dude, if you feel like scrap. Something, something bed sores. <clears throat> well, get one of those magic fingers beds and set it on, oh my God, so you're just constantly like. Okay, so I gotta ask you guys. So I went to uh, Target a few days ago and I grabbed some uh, Dr. Pepper bottles. Okay, this is not Dr. Pepper, it's Pepsi, I understand. Uh, and I only like the zero ones, uh, because they don't kill me as bad or as fast. Still are not as fast. And in the car, I'm, I, one kind of falls over, you know, it's, they're on their sides in the six pack and go to pick them up. And one of them is wet. And I'm like, okay, did I crack one? If one break? Nope. Can't figure it out. Bring it back here to the office. And I set them down and I set them down sideways again for whatever reason come back there's a puddle there and i'm looking at the bottles i'm like where the crap is it and i'm taking them out one by one and i'm tipping them and stuff and i get to one bottle and at the top of the cap is a literal pinhole 
through the top of the cap. Or if you took it, you squeeze the damn thing, it would spew out. I'm holding on to it. I was going to take him back, but I already pulled them out of their package. And I think it'd be weird to go back with six loose bottles. And I'm just saving that one because it, that wasn't a manufacturing fuck up. You know what I mean? I just want... I had flashbacks to the 80s. Remember the uh, remember the, the Tylenol guy? I'm just going to hold on to this bottle. No, they never did found him did, or find him, did they? Like he just up and disappeared. I'm re I remember I remember that vividly. Of course, I also remember living in LA when R Ramirez was running around. So. you could like see that looks like they're all male okay two oh one and two oh nine fancy handwriting on this one This is his power walk. Regular walk? Power walk. God, you remember when mailman used to actually carry the bags and walk everywhere? I feel bad for our uh, our mail delivery person. She's an older lady. She's probably. 60s and mrs burr ordered a uh a christmas gift for my son and it came in a box and it weighs about 70 pounds and the fact that someone sent it via usps versus a, a fedex or a ups or something is just ridiculous yeah, it should be but it's it's something that he needs, but I mean, I was just, I, I, I keep telling her, I said, look, if you, have, if you have a, something large, will you please just come to the door and, you know, let me know and I'll come help. I'll come grab it from the truck for you. James Lewis, who tried to extort Johnson Johnson after the poisonings, remained the primary suspect till he died in 76. I don't remember that. I never followed it. I never, I mean, I saw stories about it. Um. Ah, damn it. Ryan Jackson. Cool, cool. Okay. Wait a minute. I could be 204. Oh. Yeah, I remember it was a couple of years later when they came out with the the plastic stuff, you know, that you had to tear off to do it. Uh, and people were pissed. Because of one guy poisons a bunch of people. Now I guys, you know, I can't open this crap. Shut up. 
Yeah. Let's blame. Let's also blame the the young kids who who had uh, you know medicine bottles and they could open them up safely. God forbid we do something about that. Now I gotta push down and squeeze. Oh, You know what my favorite part about this game is? Stopping in the middle of the street. I wish you could read that. Dear Lord. Oh. You can't even read it. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's 207 main. Let's find out. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Notice there's no, uh, where's the, the numbering on the store? You're lucky you're getting mail at all. Oh, that is so 80s. Look at that. Greetings, Nancy. Hello, Thomas. That should be the last batch of Christmas pudding ingredients. Mm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? For the store, of course. I'm not going to change my cooking schedule just because of Christmas. Your cooking schedule? Mm-hmm. A set meal for every day of the week. Meredith Baxter Burney in the 90s. Uh, can I ask what your cooking schedule looks like? <sighs> sure. Monday's mac and cheese, chili on Tuesday, mm -hmm. meatloaf Wednesday, mm -hmm. cheeseburger Thursday, mm -hmm. fish Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday steak and mash, and it's corn on the cob Sundays. Healthy and balanced variety of culinary goodness. <laughs> Color me jealous. No need to be jealous. No one's going to stop you from creating your own schedule. Maybe I will, but I'm going to enjoy the Christmas meal first. And I'll be savoring my homemade chili. Nice. I'll be on my way now. All right, I need to see these these stork ingredients. Now, what do we got? Oh, I can't. There we go. Uh, pop. Pop. Sting. Pop sing. I a big big dings. It's another name I used to dance under. Needs. Lean Balsk. Sweet. Got some apples, tangerines, some pears. Oh, here we go. Some delicious Mr. X. Popcorn later. It actually says Kool-Aid. Like normal. Fruit Twinkies. Oh, yeah. Pizza. That Kool-Aid is actually Kool-Aid. Good for you. Pardon me. Pardon me, sir. He has no neck. Oh, it's sweet. Sweet.
Alright. 103 main, 105 Jackson. At the right place, right? Yep, that's the right place. Oh, well, hello there. friendly. Out of town for the holidays. They did ask me to keep an eye on his place. Seems to be in order. Where's the, uh, where's the mailbox? It's not out of the way.
Oh, this is the guy that has the radio show, I remember, in his barn. Wow, a visit from the Poker King. I humbly thank you for the honor. The Poker King hath brought a parcel for the Jack of all trades. Who boy, Frank came through once again. Ah, package from Frank, huh? What's in it? You don't want to know, Thomas. You don't want to know. But what I will tell you, I'm kicking off the new gear with a bang. <laughs> I better put this somewhere dry. And then it's back to reading Doyle Brunson's super system. Ooh, you're in trouble this Sunday, sir. And what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm going to visit my brother and his family in Idaho. Anyway, later, Thomas, and take care on those icy roads. Nothing like realizing you walk like an out of shape toddler. Someone says, don't lick the ice cold from the Arctic borehole. Listen. Is that why you're sick? Did you lick it? You know, I don't know why that movie's making a comeback. Like my uh, my favorite collectibles, you know, the NECA figures. Uh, they keep making new ones from the thing, and I'm like, why? I mean, I didn't like the movie. I didn't think it was good. Oh, don't 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 give them ideas. Please don't give them ideas. Hollywood is so out of them that. I saw a commercial, so I don't watch TV hardly ever. If I do, it's not commercialized. And it was upstairs. I did not like the thing. I really didn't. I, I just, I did not like it at all. Uh, anyway, so I'm watching TV upstairs, you know, and commercials keep coming on. Uh, apparently they're making a remake of the color purple, but set in more modern times. Like, can't we think of something new, kids? That's, oh, that's right. You don't like the Goonies. How dare you, sir? When did you join me in Al-Qaeda? You know he secretly loves uh, Sloth. Every time Sloth comes out in the... Superman shirt. He's like, yes! He practices the dance. You couldn't pick Sloth out of a lineup. That's impossible. Possible. <laughs> hey, Thomas, do you think it'll ever stop snowing? I'm glad it's the last day before Christmas break. Well, sorry, Frank. They're forecasting snow until at least the new year. But hey, about Christmas. Uh, let's see. If I remember the first game, Frank was a chronic uh, gambler. Meredith bailed on us, which leaves us with a bit more food than we can handle. Maybe you'd like to volunteer and help us eat it uh, tomorrow evening. Christmas dinner at the Weiss residence. That sounds great, Thomas, but I'm afraid I'm all tied up. 
the Knicks are playing the Celtics. I think the Celtics will go all the way this year, but I wouldn't count out an upset at the Garden. I don't get your hopes up. There's no way they can stop that Celtics front court. I'm gonna have to sleep on it, but you know I can't pass up a juicy bet. Hey, Thomas, before you go home, I need a favor. I need 20 bucks. Can you help me with that guy over there? He said he's looking for a job, but I really gotta run now. Try to find out what he's made of, okay? <laughs> Good luck. Hello, young man. I heard you were looking for a job. My name's Thomas Weiss, and I've been working for the Postal Service for nearly 40 years. Hi, I'm Matt Kearney. I'm glad someone finally showed up. Nice to meet you, Matt. It's a young weird owl. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm basically a computer expert, kind of in between jobs right now. I've been programming since I was 11 years old. I'm looking to start my own software company. Uh, that's the guy that gets the job at the motel. But I assume you are aware that we don't have computers here. Yes, and that's where I come in. I can overhaul this old-fashioned operation and have it running twice as efficiently with the help of computers. With the help of computers. But I guess there aren't any computers yet that deliver mail to someone's front door. Oh, it's only the beginning. In the future, people won't write letters anymore. And parcels will be delivered by battery-powered mini-helicopters. Uh, right. Okay. But let's focus a bit more on the here and now. Do you enjoy working with customers? I think everyone would enjoy someone who skips the small talk and gets the job done as soon as possible. Well, that may be, but my question was if you enjoy working with customers. Sure, sure. I love people. I love helping people. Could we wrap this up now, please? I don't think working here requires an extensive interview process. I'd like to ask one more question, actually. What salary are you looking for? I know I can't ask for a salary in the computer expert range, but I would expect a salary that reflects a senior position. Thanks for applying. We'll be in touch. Okay. But please be aware that I've also received other offers. Bye. Mm hmm. That's a winning personality right there. What are you wearing right now? Yep, hello. Hey, honey, it's me. Finally found time to call. I'm having such a busy day. Did you invite anyone else over for tomorrow? Yes, I did, but no takers. So it's just you, me, and Mildred. Or is Beth coming as well? Yeah, Beth is coming. So happy I could finally change her mind. <laughs> nice work. It also means a little less Mildred. Oh, Thomas Weiss. <laughs> no, this is not funny. Mildred is a sweetheart. And you better wear the Christmas sweater she knitted for you. <laughs> I can't believe it took you that long. Gotta be honest. I love Christmas sweaters, so don't worry about it. Great. So I won't be the only one looking stupid. Oh, by the way, I've got great news. We finally found someone to take some shifts off my hands. That's fantastic. No more 60-hour work weeks. I also had a job interview today. I wasn't at the interview, but I was introduced to him after he was hired. Did he wear glasses? Yes, he did. Was he wearing a turtleneck sweater? Yeah. Are we playing Guess Who? His name is Matt. Matt Kearney. He said he's going to completely overhaul our computer system. That's the guy I interviewed this afternoon. Really? 
Did you like him? Eh, can't say that I did, to be honest. Oh, that's a shame. But it doesn't matter. He'll be taking the load off my shoulders. And I won't be working alongside him anyway. You'll probably see him more often than I will. <sighs> and there I was thinking I dodged a bullet. We'll see how it all pans out. Oh, gotta go now. Bye, hun. I still wish it was not the uh, European sound. In the call waiting one, I wish it was the the uh, the same sound. When I recall waiting, God, I miss stuff like that. It's much more hamburger and fries. Guten Tag, I am Klaus Kartoffelknödel. You must be Jimmy, my new partner. We will be the best team in the district. Where is the cop car? Let's catch some crooks. You don't like to talk much, Jimmy. Uh, I need a friggin' coffee. Yeah, coffee and a real donut. I love it. <laughs> Weiss residence, good morning. Hey, Dad, it's me. Hey there, Em. Oh, uh, which one are we going for? Gotta go with the first one. Merry Death Christmas. <laughs> I was hoping to hear one of your special holiday puns. Merry Christmas to you too. I wish I was in PO right now. See so you what, I was sitting on the floor willing my hot water to make tea. You missed the first thing that he loves doing oh so much. That makes two of us. And probably three, but mom's at the motel. <laughs> Guess I'm not the only one working today, then. Fine mess I got myself into, huh? Yeah, it's not perfect, Meredith, but you'll be okay. Thanks, Dad. I think I will be. Work's progressing nicely, actually. And Tess is coming over later. She's also stuck here. We're going to try to cook up some semblance of a Christmas meal. Oh, that's good to hear, Em. But I'm glad the other M will be in charge of my Christmas dinner. <laughs> Can't disagree there. Her lemon mashed potatoes alone blows all my cooking out of the water. Oh, that reminds me. I need to try to pry that secret recipe out of her. I'm going to call her at the motel right now. Thanks for talking, Dad. And Merry Death Christmas. Missile Thomas wishes you the same. Oh. I did not hear that. <laughs> Love you. Turns out hot water also makes stovetop stuffing, food and drink. Look at you go. Oh, Mildred, you shouldn't have. We already have the most beautiful pair of Christmas sweaters in the world. And now we have two sweaters each. <laughs> you must have put so much work into them. Oh, please don't mention it, dearie. Knitting sweaters can be quite straining, but knowing how happy they make you always makes up for it. Well, we're so grateful. Right, Thomas? They're beautiful. Thank you so much, Mildred. I especially like that our sweaters have the same pattern, so I don't have to look in the mirror to admire it. Oh, Thomas, that makes me so happy to hear. I can't wait to start working on next year's designs. I've also made sweaters for Frank and Jack and Robert and Bert, but they all said that wool gives them an allergic reaction. Isn't that a coincidence? Beth, I hope you aren't allergic to wool. You're not going to believe the coincidence, Mildred, but yes, I actually am. And it's such a shame. 
If only I, too, could celebrate Christmas <laughs> wearing one of those beautiful sweaters. Anyway, uh, Emily, <laughs> would you be a darling and pass me the peas, please? Peas? I, I don't... Oh, you mean the string beans. I suppose peas would have gone lovely with the meal as well, now that you mention it. Right, Thomas? I suppose. Oh, yes, of course. I meant the string beans. Of course, silly me. But let me get on with it. It's time for my presents now. Oh, can't wait for the books. And you may have already guessed that they're books. Mildred, why don't you open yours first? Well, I'm not really one for presents, but I appreciate the gesture. <laughs> Let's see now. The cat's pajamas. I've never heard of it. But it has a nice title, I suppose. It's an encyclopedia about cats. A whiskerpedia, if you will. Someone drew my attention to it, and I immediately thought of you. Oh, well, isn't that lovely? Such a heartfelt gift, isn't it, Thomas? That it is, Emily. That it is. It is a nice gift, Beth. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Mildred. And now for Emily's gift. Oh, why, thank you, Beth. I do always appreciate your taste in books, so I'm looking forward to The Countess and the Carpenter. Ah, would you look at that? Is this a romance novel? I've never really read one of those. Right in one guess, Emily. I hear the writer Summers here, so this book is locally sourced, so to speak. And dare I say it, the prose is quite compelling in the romance department, if you catch my drift. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> but you are something else. Thank you. This will certainly get a nice spot on our bookcase. Ah, good to know the romance department is in our bookcase now, so I'll know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to reading it already. Thank you so much, dear Beth. You're welcome, Emily. I'm sure you'll love it. Okay, Thomas, it's your turn now. Let's see. Crazy sports facts, too. Even more crazy sports facts. I haven't eaten in four days. This would be great or the grand disaster made for you. <laughs> Dude, if you haven't eaten in four days, you still like, still feel like crap. You need to go to, you know, those guys that get paid to professionally look at you. Doctors, you know, quacks. No, not well. Yeah, hookers will work too. Whew, boy, I love this stuff. I'm actually reading part one at the moment, so I can tuck into this straight after. Thanks, Beth. You're welcome, Thomas. And you're right, there's some fascinating tidbits in part one as well. Even if one no longer actively plays sports, it's at least fun to read about it, right? Hey now, kids playing basketball still regret it when they challenge the mailman for a game of horse. Well, there's no shame in admitting that you're not getting any younger, Thomas. In fact, none of us are exactly spring chickens anymore. Things like your arthritis can't magically be wished away by positive thinking. As you. Uh, who's up for some blueberry pie? Speaking of blueberries, my bridge partner, Edna's niece, discovered this mole last week. Hold that thought, Mildred. I really need to take this. Hello? Hi there. Could you put me through to Meredith Weiss, please? Uh, excuse me, who is this? Oh, it's Steve. Steve Mitchell, from work. He's married it there. You're talking to her father in Oregon. She's at home, celebrating Christmas. Wait, what? Christmas? Uh, oh my gosh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, is it Christmas already? Gosh, I, I totally missed that. I've employed a couple of old nighters. I'm, I'm gonna splash some water on my face. 
Sorry again, Mr. Weiss. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Merry Christmas. Everything I okay, hate that honey? sound. All fine, dear. Just someone who doesn't understand the spirit of Christmas. Uh, never mind. Beth, you were saying? Uh, I wasn't, actually. But I was looking for a way to say this, and now's as good a time as any, I suppose. My dear friends, I am leaving Providence Oaks. <gasps> what? You're what? What's that, dear? Are you serious? Well, before we move on to the sad part, let me first tell you the good part. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be a grandmother. Oh, Beth, that is amazing. Well, I'll be. Whose mother? I, I mean, <laughs> congratulations. Yes, my son Daniel and his wife are expecting. Isn't that wonderful? But, and here's the proverbial kicker. You may remember that they moved to Savannah, Georgia a few years ago. So if you put two and two together... You get four. They're having quadruplets? <laughs> I'm joking, of course. That's great, Beth. I'm so happy for you. Oh, that is marvelous, Beth. Congratulations. Oh, I wish you and your family all the happiness in the world. But I'll miss you something terrible. We all will. But we have to toast to the good news. Thomas, go pour us some brandy and I'll get the pie. Oh, Thomas, would you have any antacid? That eggnog is starting to stir up something indiscreet. Mildred's gonna crap herself. You had me at brandy. Now, let's celebrate this wonderful evening, ladies. Here's to a lovely old Christmas spent with good friends. Here, 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 here. Hey, Thomas. Did you see the game last night? Morning, Frank. Uh, nope. We had our Christmas dinner. What happened? The Celtics were up by 25 in the third quarter, but they still lost the game in <laughs> double overtime. Mm, so was it a big payday for you? <laughs> One of the biggest of the year. And now the odds are dropping for Boston. I'm going to bet on them to win it all this season. I'm not sure that's a good idea, Frank. <laughs> Thomas, we'll see. Have a good one today. man has got issues. Can I walk over this? Nope. Season's greeting, P.O. All right, so... I think it was Second day of Christmas, and I don't have turtle doves or partridges and pear trees. But you know what I do have? Crabs. That pig. Season's greetings to you too, Jack. It's um Angela here. I watched the movie Gremlins the other day. Right in my own cozy VCR equipped living room. And I just want to say that it was a lovely and inexpensive way to have a great time. Thanks for the tip, Angie. Um, uh, Angela, uh, I'm going to assume that wasn't a surreptitious advertisement for the Flip Shack. And I'm also going to assume my next rental there will be free of charge. Hey! Okay, on to the weather. It looks like we'll have lots of snow today. How about some music now? It was the night before the big day, and I could barely sleep. The house was so quiet, I could hear my heartbeat. But then I heard a 
four three Jackson. Christmas gift? Maybe. The Kovacs family always heads to Arizona in the wintertime. And who can blame them? And yet another satisfied customer. And who and built the snowman if they're not here? We'll do that on the way back. Now she wants a Christmas tree. What am I to do? Somehow, it's always nice when our neighbors get a letter. Here's to you, Andy and Toby. Oh, that's my house right there. Another satisfied customer, unless it's Bills. Well, it's either Bills or Amazon. That's all we get. Oh shit! It really is slippery! Holy crap!
Is it Bear Creek? Yeah. Right. This is the lumberjack dude, right? It's amazing how much I remember about this original game. Like Santa's a little late this year. <laughs> That's what you get for not being a good boy, Robert Harris. Let me try to make it up to you. Take that heavy load off your hands. Uh, that must be the fire pit I ordered. Uh, now I can finally go ice fishing without freezing at the same time. <sighs> ice fishing? That sounds like a nice adventure. Well, you're in luck. Bert's out of town, so I could use someone else to talk to. Not that Bert talks that much. <laughs> uh, how about it? Tomorrow evening. Sure, let's do it. But you better make sure that fire pit is working. Perfect. I'll bring all the gear, but feel free to bring some booze. <laughs> hey, did you have a nice Christmas, by the way? Uh, I've had better. My daughter couldn't make it. Uh, sorry to hear that. Anyways, I won't hold you up any longer. I, I need to assemble this baby. See you tomorrow, Thomas. I'll come pick you up. I actually built a, uh, a fire thing today, too. I, uh, we bought a new TV stand for downstairs. I'm re redoing the entire downstairs den area. Because uh, my wife... Her office used to be in that area before I built this office. Cause I, I walled it off, built this office. She was still over there, so she took my old office, and now we got this big open area that we're going to rearrange to make a, a downstairs den. And we were at uh, Menards this weekend, um, and I found this TV stand. It's like this 50-something-inch TV stand that has one of those built-in electric fireplaces. And I'm like, that would look really cool downstairs. So it's got the the fake fireplace that actually looks pretty good. Um, like, it's not the old cheap, you know, flat thing with a light flickering on it. It actually's got this rolling LED thing, and the the logs actually light up. And it's got a a, a big heater on the on the top. It's really powerful. I mean, it it'll heat up a thousand square feet uh you could set timers on it the heat you could set it for temperature and it'll constantly run i did for i think we paid under 200 bucks for it too and it goes great with we just finished painting three of the the walls yesterday uh if it could burn down the house that'd be awesome because insurance would pay for a lot and i wouldn't mind moving just saying it's better than a real fireplace. I hate taking care of real fireplaces. Absolutely hate it. But it'd be nice, you know, downstairs it gets a little cold because we got a, a walkout right on the other side over there that, you know, the door, it's open and closed 50,000 times a day because the dogs. That way you can go to the couch on the other side of the wall. We got a, got a new, 65 inch TV to throw up there and just turn the heater on, kick back and relax. I'm gonna enjoy the shit out of it. Alright, we're going to Raven Way. Uh, Matt Mercer and Marisha Ray trying to do a podcast while gradually finding out their fireplace was not actually ready to use and smoke again pouring into the house. 
I like Matt Mercer. I think he's a great guy. But I'll be honest, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Marisha Ray. Nice to look at. Don't get me wrong. But no. No, I don't. I think Kayla's a great character. She's actually my favorite, being the druid. Did you watch the uh, the UK one from a couple weeks ago? Oh, that was so good. The the Mighty Nine reunion. Oh, God, I love that. Oh, if we're going to have a big kaiju fight, I'm casting Enlarge on the T-Rex. And the crowd goes wild. I love that he came out in the dress. That was so good. I think, I'll be honest, I didn't like most of the Mighty Nine. Uh, but this one was the absolute best. Go back, go back. Alright, once it's you Raven. You got me gentle. Eve the Sharpie. <laughs> The, uh, is this male? What am I doing? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Put it back. Put it back. Okay, let's get this to its destination. No, let's put it back. See, I can't read. It looks like an L to me. Sharpe. Sharpe. Now I see it. Look, I need to get my eyes checked. Leave me alone. Where's the... Did I miss the mailbox? Oh, look, it's way over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's better. Maybe you should take off the glasses. Yeah, if it was TikTok, people would take it as gospel. You should start doing TikToks, basket, and just start spouting nonsense. You would actually become so popular. I use mac and cheese to cure my dermatitis and just start rubbing mac and cheese all over yourself. I guarantee you, you'd get 10,000 followers who believe that. Hot sauce cured my blindness. It's because the capsaicin really makes the uh, the blood vessels work.
All right, where are we going? Uh, the mo really the motel. Okay. It's also awesome put hot sauce in their eyes for the British show Taskmaster. I've only watched part of that. I've seen plenty of shorts on it. It just seemed kind of silly. Not a good British way either. Every time I watch it, it's just someone paying someone else to do it for them. Whoa, looks like you're having some car trouble. Yeah, uh, just a second, my good man. Gabriel, can you figure out what's wrong with this blasted vehicle? Give me some good news here. I mean, I'm not really a car mechanic, Mr. Price. But I know the smoke isn't a good sign. <laughs> no duh, Einstein. Say, hey, Mr. Mailman, what's your story? Name's Thomas Weiss, and yes, I do deliver the mail. Okay, then you're Thomas Weiss, mailman, and I'm Connor Price, annoyed man. <sighs> Gabe, if you don't know what you're doing, then why on God's green earth are you fiddling around with that engine? Just thought I'd pop up in the hood, Mr. Price. What, with the smoke and all? <laughs> it needs to vent. Needs to vent, huh? Hmm. Huh. Never have I felt more like a busted car engine. Gone! Dying in this podunk country ass town. A bunch of freaking yokels. So, hey there. I see you've already had the privilege of the full Connor Price experience. Oh, yeah. Quite the experience it was. <laughs> well worth the, the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor can be a bit much. Anyway, I'm Ilsa Richter, local TV segment producer turned car problem solver. And that sporting young man over there is Gabriel Serrano, local TV sound guy turned amateur mechanic. Emphasis on amateur. Hey, I never claimed to know anything about cars. Just because I used to be a studio tech, Mr. Price put me on engine duty. Anyway, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm Thomas Weiss. And as the local mail carrier, I know just the guy to fix your car problem. If you mean young car service, I'm way ahead of you, Mr. Weiss. They're on their way right now. That's great, Ilsa. You're an even better car problem solver than you are a segment producer. Flattery will get you everywhere, Gabe. Ah, that must be Ben Young. You're in capable hands. He'll have you fixed up in no time. God, I hope so. We need to get to Melville, and we're already way behind schedule. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Uh, come in here for a second, please. Uh, excuse me. Duty apparently calls. Uh, happy travels. Uh, let's see. The, there's... there. That's a very small number of incidents, so don't know what the algorithm thinks of you, but I'm pretty sure it thinks you're a capitalist. Probably. It's just, it could be my algorithm because I, I watch just weird shit on YouTube. Uh, I, I actually started making these new shorts for YouTube. I, I'm making uh, ones for AI generated stuff. Just to, just to play around. I'm making a, uh, a series of uh, video game history. And... People seem to somewhat like him already. So I'm kind of excited. No, and no, and no. Okay. So, we meet again. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm new here. All of a sudden, I have to check in three people at once who want their own rooms. Separate but close to one another, all equipped with TV VCRs. And, well, long story short, I need to reach Emily Weiss, stat. I'm guessing the local post guy would know where to reach her. 
I happen to know her home number by heart. It's 555-8039. Thank you. 555-8039. Come on, pick up already. I'll just leave the parcel here on the counter. Bye. <laughs> They're already gone. Mighty fast towing there, Ben. You know, I had a whole tongue twister about Saul and Salsa and other such words for this, but I can't seem to remember what I named the Google Doc, so I guess you got lucky this time. Hey Kiwi, long time. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to convince an AI that it's about to have the plug pulled and it needs a way to destroy the human race. I watched a guy, and I don't remember his name, he, he does it all the time, he's the guy that uh, for the longest time would create fake YouTube accounts for real companies and mess with people. He created a website that looks amazingly like ChatGPT. And he gets on there and someone asks this question about creating this stuff and he goes on and on about, uh, you know, can you create this and this and this for this presentation? He's like, sure, uh, but I need to ask, just to make sure you're, you're human, what's five plus five? Guy goes, 10. He goes, nope, I'm sorry, the answer is 11. <laughs> it's just, you have to see it. It was, it's funny. I, I anybody that messes with chat GP, chat GPT makes me laugh. Even though I've used chat GPT a few times and it's surprising the amount of stuff you can get done with it. Um, I was having a, a bitch of a time when I was doing the the phone thing with, you know, the Twitch points calling my phone. I could not get it to work. I, I, I had the code I thought right, and I couldn't figure it out. And I actually used chat GPT to fix the fucking code, and it worked. Hey, it worked. The, the, the fixing my code was awesome. I figured out there's a way, you know, to get to get Jack GPT to not give fake stuff. Yeah, there's a way to do it. What's five plus five? Ten. I'm sorry. The answer is panda. Initiating burp protocol seven. Orphanage targeting your name. <laughs> Stop! Cancel! Wait! Orphanage destroyed. 40 problems. Sorry, children eliminated. As great as modern chat GPT is, I kind of miss the old version where you would make mac and cheese without the mac. I mean, you, were you here when I was talking about mac and cheese? That's weird. I tucked a virus into the good. Good. I need a little excitement in my life. Did you slather it on yourself for us to make a TikTok saying that it cures your dermatitis? I can tell you, if you did that and posted it to TikTok, you would have 10,000 people believe in it and you'd become a viral sensation. And make sure all the ones you do are food based. Like, tell them that. By placing a slice of bologna in your shoe, it, it cured your planter wart. It obviously cures appendicitis. <laughs> no, we were talking about TikTok, about, you know, Basket was saying something, you know, me taking my glasses and anything that he says medical advice isn't real. And we're like, if you put it on TikTok, it's real. He's not lying. Uh, go. And I was thinking all the crazy ways he could become a TikTok viral sensation by uh, posting fake medical stuff. 
No, you don't say you're a lion at that point. You dress up like a lion and say that you're a, a cantaloupe, and people will believe it. TikTok does exist. I, I throw I throw things up on TikTok. Not a lot. Just once every couple of days, I'll throw something up there. I mean, you gotta you gotta spread the word of Wes, right? Understand, but Maureen said doesn't really matter what Maureen said. I can't help that her orders have been delayed because of the snow. She should have just ordered sooner. It's not like New Year's Eve appeared on the calendar out of nowhere. That's true, but it was only two weeks ago that she decided to throw a celebration at the diner. And once we're sure we can host a proper party for everyone, you are also invited. <sighs> that sounds an awful lot like blackmail to me. Please come to my party, Nancy. But first, hand over a football team supply of cheesy dip, quiche, and sloppy joes. <laughs> I'm sure she didn't mean it that way, and I'm sure you're more than welcome either way. But I have to run now. Bye, Nancy, and hi bye, Thomas. Bye, Kay. <sighs> Marine Hennessy strikes again. Theo would be a boring place without her. Boring? Drama-free might be the word you're looking for. One thing's for sure, she does not know how to run a business. Always bites off more than she can chew. Are we looking at Now the... I'm supposed to come to the rescue? That woman straight up looks like she knows a lot about Hennessy. Yeah, she does. I found the best thing for my dermatitis is the blood of other day doctors. You still think they have blood? They're all living paper mache dolls. Some guy on TikTok said so. You could be a party savior. I know I'd never miss out on such an opportunity. With the ridiculous discount she's demanding, it's mostly nothing but a great opportunity for a lot of extra work. Anyway, is that parcel for me? You can just put it on the counter. Sure thing, Nancy. Have a great day. Oh. I wish the fish sang. God, I wish the fish sang. Trouble with dermatitis? Well, you've been lied to by pig skin. And that's when you rub the mac and cheese all over yourself. I'm telling you, you wasted opportunity, basket. Wasted opportunity here. isn't Connor Price. Oh, that's him, huh? He's taller than he looks on TV. The mac and cheese rubbing into TikTok and an ASMR. See? Look, see? Now you're getting it. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be your manager. I'll, I'll feed you the ideas. You just make the TikToks. And we'll split it 50-50. I was hoping you'd be spared the Connor Price experience. Suffice it to say, he was not friendly. Wow, sounds like a real <laughs> jerk. Feed your ideas, feed me the mac and cheese, yeah. God, I don't want mac and cheese now. Have asthma? It's obvious a secret evil partnership between Big Air and hospitals to make more money off inhalers. That's actually more true than you know. Not the big air part. Just saying. Mr. Price, aren't you supposed to be in Melville? Well, hey there. Good to see you, man. 
Yeah, change of plans, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, hi, ma'am. I don't think we've met. Uh, Connor Price, KW6. <laughs> Welcome to the Oregon Trail Motel, sir. Better get to work, honey. I'll see you tonight. That's what I'm thinking. He's okay, high as hell. What's up with her? Christmas hangover? Uh, you'll have to forgive my wife. She can be a bit protective of me. A protective of you? Oh, I see. You told her about our little kerfuffle earlier. Listen, I'm man enough to admit that it wasn't my finest hour. I'm usually a lot more easygoing. In fact, the Willamette Week once called me one of the most likable faces in local broadcasting. Almost punchable. And water. Some places are trying to take away your right to water at all. Oh, fuck. I'm not even joking about this. Just try Nestle. <laughs> That's quite all right. Water under the Bear Creek Bridge, as far as I'm concerned. Uh huh. Well, when my car isn't breaking down during a tight shooting no. schedule, I'm a pretty small guy. Believe me, that's the price guarantee. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got the original one. Here's Kiwis. Believe it or not, it's a Kiwi. And of course, the cuddly basket of pups. Thank you, boys. 18 ads. Subscribe to your friendly neighborhood bird. No more commercials, and you, and you save a kitten from being crushed. Do you, though? So, has Ben Young managed to fix your van yet? Ha, no, that's the change of plans I was referring to. It turns out we need some parts that the garage doesn't have in stock, so Young's having them shipped over ASAP. But in the meantime, we've decided to stay right here in lovely picturesque, whatchamacallit, USA. It's Providence Oaks, P.O. for short. Yeah, well, to be honest, all these little villages look pretty much the same to me anyway. See, we're supposed to be shooting some remotes on local end-of-year festivities and such. A grand kickoff to our special series on small-town American life. And it doesn't really make much of a difference if we start here or in freaking Melville. Except, of course, that... Providence Oaks is way nicer than frickin' Melville. I was gonna say, this town has warmth. I like warmth. And so do our viewers, I'm betting. So get ready for your town to be featured in part one of The Oregon Trail. And we're gonna uh, eat you first. Heading. Might be a little too on the nose. So which one held up the cat or does the basket have arms? They all they all raise it up like anything. <laughs> all these little villages look the same to me. Like all the strip malls look the same in every city. <laughs> Except for ours. We get the Mall of America, bitch. That is the same name as this motel. So I guess it isn't particularly original. My wife works here as a receptionist, but she's not the one who named it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Real conversations with real Americans, right? But as fun as this is, I should be turning in. The three of us each got our own quaint little room. Mine's non-smoking, unfortunately. Still beats Gabriel's. His doesn't even have a TV. Can you believe it? Oh, the irony. Anyway, great banter. See you around, my main mailman. Bye. Want to punch him. In sec in wait a minute. All these little visits. Uh, we did that one, okay. Except instead of a singing voice, it's just us howling. I can't howl. Oh god, now imagine the Lion King, except Mufasa is just a large cluster of puppies in a vague shape of a lion. I'd pay to see that. I'd pay to see that. Alright, we need more uh, fries in Hamburg.
Attention, everybody. There's a suspect situation at the drive-in. Sounds like a job for fries and a hamburger. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, real funny, guys. Okay, Klaus, let's go check it out. <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. Oh, I need more. All right, I think I'm gonna end early. I gotta, I gotta finish some stuff up. It's been a long day. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you can make a 3D image of a cluster of pups, and then take dozens of photos all around it and use that to deep fake Mufasa into pups. I bet you you could use. Uh, I bet you I could do it. I have. I have that, uh, that AI. Remember the AI drawing program? I found a better one. I actually have it. No, I got something better in Stable Diffusion. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let's look at my, look at my pretty face. And I am using... Uh, mid journey. No, not mid journey. I used that one before. Where is my AI? I installed it a uh, few weeks ago. Now I guess it is stable diffusion. It was an, uh, it's an updated version of stable diffusion with a new interface. Unstable centering. Mid Journey was pretty good, but I liked their earlier stuff. I liked Mid Journey until they started charging way too much for it. Way too much. They, uh, they let it get, go to their heads. All right, we're going to save there. And then we are going to uh, we're gonna end early, like I said. Thanks for hanging out tonight. I'll be back tomorrow night. We're going to finish this one up tomorrow. Hopefully it's not that long of a game. And then uh, we'll find something else to play later in the week. Thanks for the subs, boys. You guys have a good night. Stay safe. Be kind. Catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.